change you're trying to make. Mm. I'll say that again. It's just what is the change you're trying to make? And if somebody wants to go into the fashion industry, maybe just to be exploitative or to be make as much profit as they can or to get in or get out as quick as they can, they're not going to last. So the simple question, and you can, I don't know if there's anything else you want me to add to this, is what what's the change you're trying to make? Is, is Under Armour big across there? Is Under Armour yes. big? Yes, it yeah. is. Okay, cool. I mean, Under Armour are attacking and doing very well versus Nike at the moment. Um, the, the, the change Nike um, made when they first came into the market and became the world number one in the 90s, Nike were talking about, you know, just do it, as we know mm-hmm. that's there. Um, and they were saying to us, you too can be like an athlete. Now, all and this is important because it goes back to the question of what, what's the change you're trying to make. All Under Armour are doing really is saying, look, you don't have to be an athlete. Just be the best you can be. And this is disrupting. It's disrupting Nike mm. because that – can you see that subtle difference? They're basically saying, yeah. relax if you're a little bit bigger or a little bit slower. Just be you. Mm-hmm. And it's it's disrupting Nike's dominance on a global scale. So that the change they're trying to make is to make those people who are not athletes feel okay about themselves. Mm-hmm. That kind of that kind of thing, you know. What's the story? What's the change you're trying to make? Hmm. You know, that's kind of interesting because let's bring that to society right now. I remember when we were growing up that um, if you ran in a race or you competed, uh, that you won a prize. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody won a prize. Sure. And now everybody that comes, everybody wins. And so yeah. in the children's activities. Yeah. I don't know what to think about that. That's a strange one because the two things you've described for me, I don't know if they're, they could be both different kinds of wrong. This is my little brain right. trying to work out. <laughs> different kinds of wrong. I like that. Yes. Um, keep going. It's because I think, and um, don't put the phone on down on me. I can I ask you, Mr. Mr. Donald Trump, you've heard of him, haven't you? Oh, yes. Okay, cool. So some people like him, some people don't. Let, let's say nothing, nothing more than that. But there are a few people across here talking about not all of America, but the American way, or maybe Mr. Trump's way, is there are winners and losers. So to do a deal, you have to win, they have to lose. Now, I don't, I don't think that's right. I think with collaboration, we can all do okay. Mm-hmm. However, okayness, in my opinion, is not okay. Because being average, being in the middle and not pushing yourself to be all that you can be, cruising along, that's not okay. Mm. But I don't think we have to stand on other people and build walls around other people to become um, better. Um, I just think we can have little battles with ourselves and push ourselves to be as good as we can. So I don't think it's okay to say, you came last That's okay. But I also don't think it's okay to say you've got to stand on people to win. Somewhere in that middle, there is about Mike, that's me, Mike being the best Mike that I can be and Deborah being the best Deborah that she can be. I don't know. I'm sorry I'm rambling a bit now, but I just think if we try and be the best we can be as individuals, that's a good goal. I have to agree with that. The way that I – here's the way that I look at it, and it's it's – very congruent to to the way that you look at it is um, we are our own competition. We don't have to be in competition uh, mm. with anybody else just to to improve on us. That's our job, to be better human beings, to be better people. However, if I am in a race and I have trained for a race for two years, I mm. want to get a medal if I cross that finish line first that's different from the person that just came out and walked it that day. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. And we need to support those that don't win because to not win today doesn't mean you're never going to win. Right. You can win tomorrow. You can win tomorrow. So, yeah. Okay. We agree. I'm high-fiving you. <laughs> Good. I'll take that high-five. I'll take that high-five and raise you one. Cool. High six. <laughs> 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 That's funny. I was thinking of the whole hand, but high six works for me. <laughs> so, have you lived ever lived anywhere else other than England? 
No, just around England, north around the, and around the middle of England. Um, I've been across to your place just the once. My friend lives in New York. Um, you know of, well, sadly, Kate Spade is no longer with us, of course, right. but a good, fr- a good friend of mine is um, the former uh, deputy design director of, of Kate Spade. Her husband is my best friend across oh, here. Oh, how fun so, is that? Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the world's big but small. Right. It's it's kind of strange. So, yeah, a guy, a good friend of mine who I lived with for a couple of years, he he met a lady called Amy Amy Gallo Gofton, who is, as I say, the second most senior designer at I've Kate Spade. I've seen her name. Yes. Yeah, I've... she's great. I, I saw her just this Christmas. She because she was back across here in a a little place called um, um, Darris Hall. Um, which is a little place here in Newcastle upon Tyne. So to answer your question, I've only ever lived in England. I'm not terribly well travelled, but the brand is getting quite a lot of interest around the world, Deborah, because the creation of confidence, which is our mm-hmm. purpose, it seems to be kind of universally interesting. It's not a British thing. Mm-hmm. A bit of confidence can do us all a bit of good, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny, uh, about... Um... About a year ago now, I wrote a signature talk. It ended up being a signature talk. I had no idea that it was going to be at the time called uh, a, a panty story. And it was all about when you open, when women open their panty drawers, there's panties that have been stuffed in the back that are uncomfortable. There's And there's the ones that um, you wear every day that are just kind of so-so, but then you have those ones that you feel wonderful and you feel like you can conquer the world but who knows that you have those panties on yeah, when well, you're I do. yeah you told, you told everyone <laughs> so deborah yeah. did you put your best ones on to talk to me today well, of course <laughs> Excellent. fantastic that's good news i'm happy my I best was... bra too mike are they are they red <laughs> no they're black you could tell me anything, I'll believe you. Right. They're black with the red stitching. Excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. We're going we're, we're gonna to make some of them and call them the Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That would be really cool. Maybe we can sell them here. No problem. <laughs> I love that so much. So you have a very good online presence. Do you do that all yourself? At the moment, we do because we're a small company, and any any money that comes in goes straight back into the business. So we're just working hard to spread the word. But um, yeah, I mean, thank thank you for mentioning that. We we I suppose the technical term back in my agency days is content marketing. It's mm. trying to give people useful stuff. I mean, mm. we're just developing a little digital. Um, book that sounds a little boring but I don't want it to sound boring which is about little things that people can do immediately just to boost their own confidence Mm. so I don't want the messages from all those I read to be about buy our stuff we want to build a community I think that's the best way of putting it so Mm. our social media content is um is uh it's about helping people it's about here's something that's useful Uh, because as I've said we want to make a change Mm -hmm. and in the way that you're photo- that you're photographing things is also very it's understated and yet it says so much i love that your message and branding is very very clear and i have to compliment you on that because that's a that's hard to do it really is and and you you've done it so exquisitely i admire it very much i think that's what what attracted me to Um, ask you to be my friend on LinkedIn was because of the things that you were posting so your content is working very well and and the pictures that you are posting as well I just they're lovely well something that's working very well for us Deborah um I'm I was 50 this year I mean I've seen your pictures you're only about 23 aren't you so you were on time (laughs) times three (laughs) <laughs> did you see what I did there? Did you see what I did there? I'm trying to be your best friend. You're <laughs> so doing a great job. Excellent. Okay, this is weird. I'm talking about your underwear, all sorts. It's going, oh, how, how rude. Okay, so um, what I was going to mention, I'll get back on topic. Um, I, when I was 50, 
Deborah. This is on your subject of our content. I think you know this. I decided to launch this little online diary called 50 Odd. And 50odd.co.uk, I decided I would write one little story every day for 10 years. And I started doing this on the 26th of July, 2018, last year, because on the 26th of July, 2018, I was 50. So every single day, and I'm going to do this for 10 years, all I have to do is stay alive. Mm-hmm. If I, I can't, but basically there's a little story every day about confidence, about being a 50 year old guy, about what it feels like to be a 50 year old guy, what it feels like to have a two year old daughter, because I had no kids until recently, my little, my daughter's two, just how it all feels. So there's an honesty to that, which mm-hmm. makes me look both bonkers and sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing. And I think, it can, I think it can be quite endearing because in the world of social media, there are so many people doing that funny pouty face down the camera to pretend that their lips are bigger than they are. Yes. And they're putting all these funny filters on. So on the 50odd.co.uk thing, Deborah, I'm unfiltered completely because I'm just telling people about my life. And um, that, that people quite like that, I think. Oh, yes. You're, it's real. It's relatable. It, it is, because when I'm writing something every day, the only subject I know enough on to write so much on is me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I just write about me. And um, strangely, there are, there are a few hundred people who every day they get my little story and they comment. And if I miss a day, they tell me off. So uh-huh. it's, it's doing okay. So what's the name of your blog? It's the number 50, it's very, it's 50-odd uh, 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 dot co uk. I mean, the, the reason I've called it 50-odd is because I'm 50 and I'm odd. So, <laughs> so the, the name kind of made itself. So to answer your question, <laughs> www50, the number, odd dot co dot uk, 50-odd dot co dot uk. Very good. I think when I post this on Spreaker and YouTube and I, t- I mean, yeah, YouTube, iTunes, and iHeartRadio, I'll put a link to that so people can right. find you. That's pretty fun. I like yes. that a lot. It, it costs nothing, Deborah. It's just stuff that I think about, and sometimes it's quite uplifting. Sometimes it's quite thoughtful, but you know, every day there's a little tiny thing. It takes 60 seconds to read, and it's done. Right. So I'm going to ask you a question. What the heck is it like to have a two-year-old at your age? It's horrendous. If you were close, <laughs> you'd be 86. <laughs> um, well, it's an interesting one because I've never had children before. Um, I've decided to try and be fitter than I've ever been in my ah, yes. 50s because I don't, you know, I don't want to die, basically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a damn I, good reason, yes. <laughs> that, that's the number one reason, isn't it? Stay alive. So yes. um, I'm not a, a freak about, you know, fitness. I just try and keep a little fitter. What is it like? It's okay. It's great. I mean, I, I you know, when people go from not having kids to having kids, I, they get it. I mean, I get it. Now. Right, yes. 48 years, I didn't get it. You know, how can this little smelly thing suddenly... <laughs> suddenly make you want to be with it because it, it smells funny and it's noisy it's noisy go away and it costs all this money but clearly that it's the opposite but i don't know i don't know what happens because i she's lovely so she's called isabel and she's great. oh i love that name that's a great name i have my first little granddaughter um mm-hmm. she's 18 months old now and uh and I found the same reason, the same thing. I have to be healthy. I have to be able to get up and down off the floor to play with her. I have to um, be strong so that I can pick her up. And it's the same motivating factor is is to watch your children and grandchildren grow up is What's a very name? good motivation. Her name is Avery. Excellent. Yes, Avery Lynn. Yes, she's she's a joy. So what's next for you? What are you coming out with next? What are you working on? Well, the, I suppose the big thing is at the moment, Deborah, we're an accessories brand. We're a menswear accessories brand. And by the end of this year, we'll have moved out of just accessories because mm. we're, for example, doing great big knitted sweaters. Oh, nice. And um, some T-shirts, long and short sleeve T-shirts, all with a little bit of red going on. And... Um, 
I'm going to describe this because you can picture it. A bowler hat. You know a bowler yes, hat. Yes, yes. A little pork 